Shalom. Prophesying to the wheel reloaded will be with you live on AM 1370 WLTH Radio every other Sunday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you there. So here we are again. Again, this is prophesying to the wind. We are Israel United with Israel United in Christ. Our mission, our goal, is to teach the gospel of repentance from sin to our people scattered around the world as a result of disobedience to God's commandments. Our people, the Israelites, suffer from a wide range of issues such as self-hatred, domestic violence, mass incarceration, and economic exploitation. However, the Bible has the solution to our people's problems, and that's our main goal for this show, to provide those solutions to our people, to show our people that the solutions to correcting the wrongs that are in our lives is this Bible, the Holy Bible, the King James Version. So we're going to go into, we're going to go ahead and go into it. We're going to continue what we, a lot of, from the things that we were speaking about last, the last time we were on two weeks ago, about fixing the black community. So we're going to revisit the first segment where we were speaking on the identity crisis. One of the steps to fixing the black, the so-called, the, the, the black community is we must know who we are. We must fix the identity crisis. Let's start out with 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Because one thing that we have to understand is that the Bible is our, is our guide. The Bible is our... our uh, Roadmap to success, so to say. Read that. Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen. All Scripture is given is given by inspiration of God. So the Bible says that the Scripture is given by inspiration of God. So yes, we know that men physically wrote the Bible, but it's the most it's the Most High God that inspired the men to write the Bible. Read. And it's profitable for doctrine. It says it's profitable for doctrine. When you look up the definition of doctrine. It says it's a set of beliefs by which we govern our lives. It's a set of beliefs by which we govern our lives. So the Bible, we look in the Bible to be able to govern our lives correctly according to the instructions given by our God. Read. For reproof? For reproof. Reproof is, in a nutshell, is constructive criticism. Telling you what you did wrong. If, you, if you're going in the wrong direction, reproof is that, that, uh, that roadblock to tell you, no, stop, you're, going, you're doing the wrong thing. Read. For correction. For correction. Correction. That correction is you being adjusted to function accurately. The definition says adjusted to function accurately or in accord with the standard. Our standard is the Holy Bible. So we need that correction. We need the correction of the Bible. And that's our goal and, and focus on the show. Read. For instructions in righteousness. So it says for instructions in righteousness. Real quick, get Deuteronomy 6 and 25 so we know what righteousness is. Because this Bible is the it's, it's the book of life. This is what we the, we supposed to study the Bible and apply, study and apply, because the, it's the Bible that's gonna actually give us good success. The Bible tells us that in Joshua one and eight. Read that what you got. Deuteronomy chapter six verse twenty five, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as He have commanded us. So when in saying Second Timothy said. We, the Bible is used for instruction and righteousness. And in that righteousness is the commandments of God, like we just read in Deuteronomy 6 and 25. It's the commandments of God, not our righteousness, what we, what we uh, gather in our own heads or we get from, from the church. Or, no, it's what the Bible tells us. That's how we instruct ourselves in righteousness. So we can go ahead into this first segment. We're going to start in Deut Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 1. Because the main problem in the black community is that we do not know who we are. That's the first step to us getting the, the com our communities together, to getting ourselves together as a people. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 1. And Moses with all the elders of Israel commanded the people saying, keep all the commandments which I command, which I command you this day. So the reason that we read this verse here is we want to see that Deuteronomy is written by Moses to the Israelites. And as we're going to further prove 
the Israelites are the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And we're going to go through that and show because that's the identity crisis. We are the Israelites. And if you know anything about the Bible, the Bible from cover to cover is addressed to the Israelites. But a lot of times when we read our Bibles, we don't see that. We don't know that. So a lot of times we read the Bible in blindness and because we don't see no connection to the Bible, a lot of our people hate the Bible. But our goal is to show you that, no, this is your history book. That's the identity crisis. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, the, so when we read this verse, it says, so remember, this is addressed to the Israelites. It says, it shall come to pass, which letting them know this is something that's going to happen in the future. We know that the Bible was written over, four, over three, four thousand years ago. But it says, it shall come to pass, meaning something's going to happen in the future to the Israelites if they do not listen to the voice of the Lord God, to observe, to do his commandments. So if we refuse to do what... God instructed us to do, there are going to be curses, which are bad things that's going to happen to the Israelites. Curses. Now go to verse, jump to verse 46. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So we got to remember the focal point is that these are curses. We're in the same chapter. These are the curses. So disobedience equals curses. And read that again. And they shall be upon and thee. Said, and it said they. That they is the curses. It says the curses shall be upon the Israelites. Read. For a sign. For a sign. A sign. What is a sign? You, you know where you are by a sign. If you look at the, a street sign, if you're on Broadway or, or Fifth Avenue, the only way, you only, read, only way you know that you're on that street is by looking at the sign. So the only way you're going to know who the Israelites are, I've been looking at the curses. And we're going to bring, we're going to go through a lot of those curses to show who the Israelites are, who the Bible is talking about in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read. And for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So it says they're going to be upon, the, the curses are going to be on the Israelites for a sign and a wonder. And it's going to be on our seed forever. That one wonder is when you when you see something and you just wonder why you you see a, a group of people like our community you see how you see our communities you ride through there's abandoned houses all over the place you got young men standing on the corner selling drugs that's a wonder when people drive past like why are they why are all these houses abandoned why are they always standing on the corner why are they always robbing each other why are they always shooting each other down in the streets that's a wonder. And it says it's going to be on your so thy seed forever. So go, let's go back to verse 16. So we're going to start going. We're going to go through some of these curses so that we can identify who the Bible is talking about in the book of Deuteronomy. Because it's we know it's talking about the Israelites when you look at the in biblical terminology. But today we, gotta, we have to connect the dots of who that people is today. Because all of the nations that's, that have been from the beginning are here today. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 16 Cursed shall thou be in the city And cursed shall thou be in the field So the Bible says Cursed shall thou be in the city And cursed shall thou be in the field A curse We, 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 already, we already know that a curse is a bad thing So cursed shall thou be in the city And cursed shall thou be in the field We're going to start with that field part The Cursed shall thou be in the field When you look at our history what what had what were we doing in the field? We were picking cotton. We look back. You ain't even got to go back fully 400 years. You can go back 60, 70 years. In the South, our people were still picking cotton, sugar cane, tobacco. We were cursed in the field. We were cursed to serve hard bondage. And if go to that first part, it says, "Cursed shalt thou be in the city." When you look at Chicago. Gary, we're in Gary now. You look at Gary, you look at Detroit, you look at New York. 
the cities, the various cities in Louisiana, all over the all over the, the nation, all over the world, the cities that we are living in, we are at the bottom of society. Do we you, you go through our cities, there's abandoned buildings, the crime rates are high. That's a curse. And when you go through when you go through when you go through any city, when you go through when you see when you recognize and see the various nations that's in the cities, it's only in the black community, the black and Hispanic community, that you see these conditions, that you see these harsh conditions. Let's read Leviticus 26 and 1 real quick. And as we are going through, feel free to call in. The call in number is 219-885-1371. Call in with any questions you may have at any time. Let's read that. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 1. 31. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 31. And I will make your cities waste. It says, I will make your cities waste. When you look at the cities across America, whose city, whose, whose neighborhoods are waste? Ours is. When you go through Gary, Gary was once an, an, an industrial city. But what happened? White flight. It, said it, was, it was called white flight because the so-called white people were able to take up they take up their houses and their family. And leave but who was left behind we were because we didn't have that same we didn't have the same means to just be able to pack up and go and now you look at this you look at this when you ride through the cities of Gary the cities are waste it's abandoned buildings abandoned churches abandoned businesses abandoned houses and it's not like one house here and then you go you know then the rest of the block is good it's, it's 10 15 houses on one street that's abandoned that's our cities being waste. That's identity. That's an identity crisis. And that's a curse of the Bible. It shows, it's showing us who the Israelites are. Because we the only ones that fit the, the, um, these qualities that we see listed in Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. And we'll go to verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 6, 17. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. It says, Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. When you just think about just think about the the, uh, the basket. When you just think about a, a regular basket, what, what happens with that basket? You put stuff in the basket. Like a, a picnic basket. You put your food in there and it holds it holds the food so you can carry it to the you know, picnic. You you lay the uh, your sheet out. And you take the stuff out of the basket. So when you look at that, Kerwin says, "Curse shall be thy basket." What's supposed to sustain our communities, our businesses? We supposed to have businesses set up, and those businesses we shop with one another, and those businesses will, will take care of the community. But no, not in our community. When you look in our communities, our businesses don't even succeed. A brother or sister can go get a business, and what happens? It falls right up under. And why do we fall right up under? Because we don't support each other. We don't, we don't, we won't go and shop with each other. We would rather go to somebody that's with that's in our community with a business, shop with them, and they're gonna take the money and build up their community, build up their land. Our businesses don't succeed. We get a business and three, four months down the line, right back down to nothing. Our businesses don't prosper. And this is this is as a whole. You may have that one or two businesses that may uh succeed, but as a whole, as a nation. Our businesses don't succeed, and our, because our businesses don't succeed, our communities don't succeed. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. So now, we, we look at this. When you examine our history, when we were in slavery, we had wives, and our wives were often taken from us. We were in our in the slave quarters, and the slave master would come and take our wives and take them in the house and sleep with them. That's what it says. It says, Thou shalt betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. That's what it's talking about. That happened to us during slavery. Read that second part again. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build in house. And thou shalt not dwell therein. So when we were in slavery, that's another thing. We were building, we were building houses. 
but we were not dwelling in those houses. We was building up the houses, building up the dens. When you look at the very, you look at 12 Years a Slave, uh, Roots, you look at all these various slave movies, you see these things. And these, these movies wasn't just made up out of thin air. These things were actual historical facts that happened to us as we have been in this, in this land across the world. Read. Thou shalt plant a vineyard and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. We were the ones planting the crops, planting the seeds, cultivating the cultivating the lawn. We were doing all of that, but we didn't. We got the um, we got the scraps. We didn't. We weren't able to uh, enjoy the fruits of our labor. We did all the work, but got the scraps. That only and that only happened to us. Now, real quick, I'm gonna go go to Daniel. Pull, give me Daniel. Daniel chapter nine. I think it's eleven. Remember, our goal, as we are on this show, our mission and our goal is to teach the gospel of repentance from sin to our people scattered around the world as a result of disobedience to God's commandments. Because our people suffer from various, various issues dealing with self-hatred, violence, domestic violence, incarceration, economic exploitation. We suffer at a, at, at, ain't, there's, no, there's no nation that suffer like we suffer. There's no group of people that suffer like we suffer. And our goal is to show you to show you the solutions out of the Holy Bible. Read. Daniel chapter 9, verse 11. Yea, all Israel has transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Uh -huh. So this is this is what we just read in Deuteronomy 28. We're saying the same thing in slightly different words, but it's saying the same thing. We broke, we disobeyed God's rules, so now we are experiencing the curses. And you can see those curses evident in our community. Read. And he have confirmed his words. He has confirmed his words, meaning what he said, what he written, it came to pass, and we can see it in history. Read. Which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us. By bringing upon us a great evil. Read. For under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. So the Bible letting us know that the, the evils that we experience and the things that we go through, there's no other nation on this earth that even come close to coming to the same sufferings that we have. Because many of many people think actually think that there's there's other groups of people that suffer like we suffer. Not at all, not even close. And the Bible proves that because the things that we're going through, you can when you look at the history, only the only the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans went through these things that that's detailed in Deuteronomy 28. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Let's go to verse 32. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32: Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And it says, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Who, who, who did that happen to at an alarming way? We was over here we was in, in slavery, and it, happens, it happened in slavery, and it happened today. It still happens today. That's what, that's what, that's what you call uh, DCFS. Is it, is it called DCFS in, um, in Gary, in Indiana? DCFS, where they, 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 they deem you not um, capable to take care of your kids, and they take them. And ain't nothing you can do because they're gonna they're gonna build build a case against you, saying that you let's say they they bring things up like you not feeding the children right or things that different like that, and they come abuse. in child abuse, child neglect, and all it take ch child molestation, and they'll take that, and it just it could be some some somebody random that just said it. They won't even they investigate it, but you won't have a, 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 a you won't have a, a, a fighting chance to actually. Um, fight against it to keep your kids. They just take them and put them in the system. Put them in, in put them in for um, what you call it, um, foster, foster homes. That's how it happens today. When you look back in slavery, our children were stripped from us. When you look at the movie, if you ever seen the movie Twelve Years a Slave, there was a lady, uh, uh, a lady that portrayed a slave in there. Her son was her son or daughter was taken from her and sold to another slave master. And it was nothing she could do. She was actually, she was, she was actually 
crying and weeping for weeks upon weeks because she couldn't do nothing to get her child, children, her child back. Read on. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. So our children was taken from us in slavery. They were taken from us in slavery, and there was nothing we could do. We had no military might. We had no economic might. All we could do was cry day in and day out and wish that we could see our child again. But it wasn't happening. Our sons was taken from us. So if you, if you, if you are listening in and you want to call, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can call in at 219-885-1371. So let's proceed. Let's go to 30, verse 37. Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So remember, we're going through the curses that happened to the Israelite. And we're, 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 the, this segment, we're going through identity crisis within the black community. So it says, read it again. And thou shalt become an astonishment. It says, thou shalt become an astonishment. What's an astonishment? Astonishment is, is like we just read, like we read in the other verses, said it was a wonder. When, when, when people, when you drive through, even when we drive through our communities, you drive through our communities and it's, and it's, it's an astonishment to see the, the heightened murder rate, the heightened crime against our own people. It's not even, it's not like we going and robbing another nation. And that's not, that's not, we don't condone that neither. But we actually shoot and kill, we hate our own brothers that look just like us that's going through the same struggles that we go through that's an astonishment it's like whoa how you how you hate the how you hate the brother that look just like you how, how can you consciously kill and shoot down a brother that look just like you that's an astonishment we we ride through our neighborhoods and look at that and even in the the other nations that live that live amongst us and around us when they ride through our neighborhoods it's like man why is it trash all over the place they don't have no pride in their community grass ain't cut those things are an astonishment read and a proverb and a proverb a proverb is a wise saying what is what are some wise sayings they say about the so-called blacks if you want to hide something from a negro put it in the book black men are always lazy black men don't take care of their kids and sad to say a lot of those things those are wise sayings a lot of those things are true when you look at the black community there's a, a, a plethora of single parent homes with fathers that act some, some, in some cases, the mother run the father away. But in a lot of cases, the father just ain't that. It's just a, a young man that's just, he's just sowing seeds in multiple women and just not taking care of the kids. He don't care. He have no care. And he don't even, not, not, and some of it ain't, ain't even the fact that he don't care. He don't even know how to take care of the children. He's scared to take care because he, he, he didn't have a father, so he didn't, he didn't receive instruction to be able to care for a child. But, so, but he's having children, and now these children are growing up without a father. That only happens at an alarming rate amongst us. Read. And a byword. A byword. A byword is to be called anything outside of your God-given name. We are the Israelites. That's the identity crisis. How is it that our nationality changes Every 10 or so years, we've been called uh, colored, Negroes, Afro-American, African-American, uh, Black. niggas, Blacks. You got a Mexican. That's a byword. Because when you, Mexican is not in the Bible. Latino is not in the Bible. But we are called these names. That's a byword. That's a curse as a result of breaking God's rules, not doing what he told us to do. That's the identity crisis that we face. Let's jump to verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So this is another curse. Remember, this is the, the book of Deuteronomy was written to the Israelites. And these are, we were going through bad things that happened to the Israelites as a result of not doing the commandments, not doing what the Most High God instructed the Israelites to do, which we know the Israelites are the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans by the things that we are going through. Because we remember, we read in verse 46 that these curses are going to be upon the Israelites for a sign. So you're going to be able to identify and know who the Israelites are by the curses that's on them. 
because when they break the commandments. Read that again in 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. It says, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. So the Lord sent our enemies against us because we broke his commandments. And the enemies of the Israelites are the, all of the other nations because the other nations are used as the most highest belt to discipline the children of Israel. Read. And hunger. And hunger. When we go shopping, we go shopping at Jewels, Walmart, uh, what's it, Country Market. We go to all these various different places to buy food, McDonald's, uh, Popeyes. And when you look, when you, when you, if you do a little research, we don't own none of this. We don't own none of this stuff. Our enemies own it. The other nations, so-called white men, Arab. All the, the other, we go into our nations to satisfy our hunger. Read. And in thirst. And in thirst. We live in a city. If you got a house, you're paying a water bill to the, the government or to the village hall. This whatever city you're living in. We we not we not the 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 uh the big bosses in the in those uh village halls and things of that nature. We gotta go to our enemies. Just because a, a, a so-called black man hold a, a particular office or alderman and all that, those are those are that's a show. We don't have no. We being pu we puppets for our community. Gifts. We 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 give. They they give us gifts to do those things, and they use us to oppress our own people. Read. Well, and water. It, what the water? Just want to look. The the what? You got Aquafini, uh, Ice Mountain, uh, the Sunny, Pure Life. We don't we don't Fiji. We don't oh, we we drink this water. We have to go to our enemies and water water falls free, freely from the earth. We used to have wells. We have a well in your land. You go get the water out the well. We can't do that. We got to go to our enemies to get water to quench water our too. thirst. And they control it. Read. Because some cities, they control it. Some cities and some towns that you live in, you can only water your you, you only water your grass on the odd days or the even days. That's a curse. That's a bad thing. Read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. The clothes that's on our back. We go and get our clothes from our enemy. We don't own the manufacturing companies that produce the clothes. Yeah, you may have a, a Sean John or somebody that, oh, well, all in all, we go to our enemies to get the to get that stuff produced. We don't own those things, read. And in want of all things. Whatever we want, whether it be from your when you have children, you gotta get the birth certificate, the social security number, you wanna get married, you gotta go get the marriage license, you wanna get a home, you wanna you got you gotta go to your enemy to get that loan. For everything that we want in this land, we have to go to our enemies. We don't we're not going to another black man to get it. We going to the other nations. Read. And it's going to be sp more specific as to who this person is. Read. And he shall put a yoke. So of notice it says, and he shall put a yoke of iron. That yoke of iron was on our necks in slavery. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. We don't have yokes of iron on our neck today because we are destroyed. We don't know who we are. We don't know that the Bible is our history book. We don't know that we are the Israelites. And as we going through it, these are things that, these are identifying factors that show that we are truly indeed the Israelites because we fit the curses that's in this book. We were, we had the, the yokes of iron on our neck. We were sold on the west coast of Africa by Africans to the so-called white men. They brought us over here on slave ships. And we're going to go to that. Let's go to verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. With so, so the ships. Bible says, and the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. If you know anything about Bible history, if you know anything about the Bible, when the Israelites were in Egypt, what were they doing? They were serving hard bondage. They were in slavery. They were bondmen and bond women. And that's what this is talking about. Because when you look, it says, Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. When we exited out of Egypt, we walked out of the land of Egypt. Read that. And what is Egypt? Let's read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. It says, we, he brought, read it again. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is synonymous with bondage. So read, go back to 68. We almost finished with this segment. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. 
and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt or again. Bondage. Again with with ships. With ships. How do we get over here to the shores of America? On transatlantic cargo slave ships. The Bible is our history book. We are the Israelites because we fit these curses. There's no other nation that fit these curses. That's how we fix the black community. We have to recognize and realize that we are the Israelites. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning we won't see our homeland again. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. So when we got off those slave ships, we were sold on the auction blocks as slave women and slave men, and there's no there was no man that could save us out of the conditions that we face. So that's the that's gonna be the end of the first segment. We're gonna take a, a quick break. We're going to uh, come back, and remember, if you want to call in, you can call in at 219-885-1371. And remember, our goal and mission is to teach the gospel of repentance from sin to our people scattered around the world as a, as a result of disobedience to God's commandments because we suffer from a wide range of issues such as self-hatred, domestic violence, mass incarceration, and economic exploitation and that we are here to provide the solutions to that which is the holy bible we used to scream black power while heron was pushed but at the end of the day nothing's in vain iuic has been given a vision the tents of judah has risen many has attempted the mission minor murmuring omitting and missing the mark just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.